Beers and Steinberg. You know what the fuck it is? Aries and Andy, you and the jerk. You know it's time to get this work. The real raw, gutter, uncut cocaine. No political corrections. Always sleep. Fuck being a woke. We discuss politics and jokes. Cry, we lick. There's levels to this shit. Before you were sucking on your mama's tit. Airy Spears don't give a fuck. We talk about race a lot. Racism. Sexism. Much love to my loyal bitch bag holders. Rollers, clip loaders. We got them in the folders. The whole world on our shoulders. Spears and Steinberg. Yeah. Yo, let's record. Let's, let's, <laughs> we're, we've been recording. Oh, we've been recording. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yo. I got to do this. I got to okay, do this. Okay. <laughs> And I told Andy in the elevator, uh, we're going to have to call this episode, finally, Godfrey. Um, oh. So listen, man, I remember way back, yeah. we first did my man's podcast, me and Andy. Uh, and since the, the both of us did it, yeah. I've done Godfrey's podcast, I think, two, maybe three more times. Yeah. But I, I was like, dude, one day you got to return the favor. And of course he's willing, but yeah. we just never... Because Godfrey lives on the East Coast. I live on the West Coast. So unless we happen to be in the same place with Andy, how are we going to do it? It's just hard schedules. Right. So then I found out. I'm like, oh, shit. Somebody hit me up on Instagram and was like, yo, Aries, it's a conundrum. Yeah. I love me some Godfrey and I love yeah. me some you. What should I do? I said, hey, look, man, <laughs> you can't lose either way. If you want to go see any, and he, he kind of alluded to, I really want to see Godfrey. I said, my man, I'm not going to take offense. You, That's good money spent. Whether you see him or whether you oh, see me. A battle with you? Yeah, he said, well, I said, whether you see him or whether you see me is good money. Good for you. So, so uh, I said, whatever you decide to do, man, have a good time. Yeah. So I was like, oh shit. So I hit him up and was like, yo, Godfrey, man, you at the Baltimore Comedy Factory, me and Andy at Magoobies, which is a half hour away from you. Mm -hmm. Let's put the bat signal in the, in the air. Yeah. Meet me on the roof like Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> and, and, and here we are. Oh! Finally, Godfrey in the building. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> what, what you should have said was, uh, see whoever you want, but buy merch from the other person. Okay, so go see Godfrey, but buy the merch from me. Yeah, see the Jew? That's your the Jew. <laughs> this is my T-shirt. Yeah, oh, that, it's, a it's my from my joke. McDonald's. It's about I'm driving a retarded kid to McDonald's. Oh, it's I about it retarded people. No, no. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of people. I'm glad you made him blonde because a lot of people have said that. Is that is that I, Andy? I, I don't even see how they could I do that because you, 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 you don't have the ZZ top. You don't have it. ZZ top here. But so that so you tell people it's a retarded guy. It's yeah. No, I know. I know you don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm just saying because. <laughs> yes. And that's the reaction. Yeah. 100%. Aries is always like, whenever I watch you on Vlad, they'll be like, and you know, Vlad will be like, so um, it looks like um, you, it looks like you can be really offensive. I mean. Um, right. It's like this. So uh, how do you, you know, I mean, with this cancel culture and stuff right. like that, I know you've been on the show for any time. Uh, so, and you'd be like, listen, listen. <laughs> it's like, comedy is like, that's 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 something I can't I can't I can't veer off. That's like that's like Jordan. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that's like Jordan. He, the guy. I finally had to tell Vlad shut the fuck up, it's and like, I told I, you if that. Yeah. Jordan, it's like Jordan having an open lane and not dunking. You know what I mean? I'm gonna take that ball. Come on, and man. I'm dunking. Tongue out. He's like, you, I don't get you, you. don't give like you don't give a fuck about political correctness. Not at all. Ah, shit, which is Fallon fine. Gray. Which is fine. I mean, I'm you know I'm from the same. School oh, I as pay you for are. it. Some I pay for it. Yeah, we all pay for it in a certain to a certain point. You know, we do. I mean, you know, and we do. It's we, we come from that school of thought. You know, that, because cancel to me. Listen, first of all, of course you gotta you you as a comedian you still want to stay in the parameters of comedy. Sometimes people do hide behind comedy and just say some real cruel shit. I go, but were you clever with it, though? You know what I mean? You yeah, can say a well, racial you know, joke. Finesse Mitchell told me, if it ain't funny, it's hate speech. So as long as it's funny, right. but even that now right. is getting blurred. It's getting blurred. But my thing is cancel culture is phony. That's the problem. It's but it's phony, phony with power. Yes, it's phony with power. But that, that power is also fake because it's a small percentage of the people that are on social media that are actually enacting yeah. this power. Yes, they're enacting this power. But the problem is, is there it's it's a white power structure again. 
It's you know cancel because nobody black is canceling stuff like we that. We just talked about nobody this. black is right. doing that because there's nothing really that offends black folks. <coughs> because, <coughs> not, <coughs> maybe, maybe you haven't seen a video. <laughs> or that say no, no, no. There's not a lot. Well, because we've taken a lot. Because on social media, everybody always whenever there's like because there's a lot of they said even when um Elon Musk took over Twitter. They were talking about the percentage of, of bullying that went up. And they said the hatred of black people went up 212%. So people were really, really, really expressing how much they hated black people. I think I saw that poll. Because it's like, it's always, whenever they're saying, there's a lot of racist comments, but it's usually only about black people. There's not a lot about Asians. There, I'm sure there are. They're still about Latinos. But then people from those, those oppressed areas are dogging black people. Well, like, I, every we, other we, race we, dogs I, black I've people. I've said on this podcast a million times. Yeah. And even when we were talking about Pele, like, niggas is always at the top of the poll in oh, terms of hatred. We, yeah. we are the Nike of hatred. Well, but it's, we're Nike. <laughs> they're, but they're, we're Nike. Just hate them. Just, just hate them. <laughs> just, just do it. <laughs> but, and, and some people just hate black people because it's, it's my friend Dante. Dante said this the best. Dante, Dante Nero. Dante Nero right, said right. it is almost patriotic to hate black people that comes with wow, the that's package a way to, of being wow. American but, but, that was one of the wow. best statements but, but, I've ever yeah. heard but it's so, patriotic love baseball football Michael, and hate black people that's like part of the American culture but as we're seeing right now uh -huh. it goes past America it's always been past America America is yeah. just the shining example no doubt but 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 the youth of black people today yes, yes. is a little different. It's a little bit more sensitive in the youth. They're looking. They're the they're the ones that are looking at things as being cancelable. Not you. You're right. In our age group, I don't think that Black America is looking to cancel. But I think in the younger age group, that's changing. It's ch it's ch it's nah because my my nephews, you know, they're in college, and and my niece, and they talk about racism just like that. They're the uh okay, the cancel culture has made the black folks in America like Canadian blacks. Because Canada has always been very don't talk about this. Even in Montreal, the black can the black comedians in Montreal who are usually Haitian or from the Congo, they go, Wow, you guys in the, in the States, even though we're just downstairs, I call it downstairs. downstairs I like that. It's like you guys get to say so much. You guys get to say this, say that. I go, what do you mean? It's like, well, they don't really like, in Canada, the way they talk about racism, they don't really like to talk about racism. They don't want to be too blatant about it. In Canada, but it exists. It, dude, they're some of the most racist people. It's but sorry. The way, it's yeah, sorry. Sorry, yeah, nigger. Sorry. Right, they'll sorry. say that with a sorry. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's under the rug, though. They, but, keep, it, they keep it hidden. I, I have a joke that I do in front of Canadians. I go, yo, you guys, your Thanksgiving is in is October. They go, yeah. So you murdered the Indians earlier. See, because mm. our, our Thanksgiving is in November. Right. They, they murdered the Indians. They murdered them. Just like the, uh, we're all North Americans. Right. But they, they, but they go, we don't really, you know, but they have Indians on reservations in Canada. They call them the, and they have an Aboriginal day. They're just as fucked up as Americans, they're no different than white Americans. It's the same people. And I did a Mohawk, uh, uh, what's it called? Podcast. I did a, a Mohawk Indian podcast some years ago, like, what, 12 years ago? It was the Mohawk. They were fans of mine. And they were, when I tell you the real deal, they were like, yeah, the fucking white man. <laughs> they were just like, they fucking murdered all my people, da 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 da. And they said, you know, Canada, the real name for Canada is Ganada, which means village. It's a Native American. I mean, come on, Saskatchewan. Right? Yeah. That's all Native American land. And whites literally destroyed them. But well, Canadians come off like these really, really nice people, but they still are super racist. Well, they're nice outwardly. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, at home, it's a whole at, different... Yeah, they're, like American whites, like American whites can literally be like, I don't like da-da-da-da. Fuck you people in my... You know, Can Canadians aren't really like that. Up 200% if you give them the chance in America. Right, like, <laughs> if you watch Canadian television, it is white as fuck. There's barely any black people, barely any Asians, barely any Arabs. They don't say anything about it. They just don't hire black people. It's like ink, like British television. Not a lot of black people on TV. They just don't address it. You, you know what I'm saying? How, how often <clears throat> on your Instagram mm -hmm. do you get called a racist by white people? 
Oh, all the time. Like, because so a dude, I get called a dude racist. just hit me. They go, oh, really? Oh, boy. Now look who's being racist. Let you me know? tell you something. I, 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 can, I can hear this. their voice in a text. Sorry. I, I, I recently posted a thing about where I saw this video of a lion in Africa uh-huh. and some white folks was in a golf cart. Yeah. And they let the lion crawl up in the golf cart. Jesus. And Christ. again, I talked about white people's affinity with wild animals and right, right. dying. Right. And this white dude hit me up and goes, why is everything about race with you? And I said, <laughs> motherfucker, you're a fucking imbecile. Because if you go through my feed, you could see everything ain't about race with me, you mm-hmm. fucking clown. It's like, it's, it's like every time, they, if I even make a joke about the yeah. obvious yes. or something that white people do, right. they get so like ass hurt. Mm-hmm. And I get called a racist. Like, what, what makes you think I'm racist, nigga? But, Go through my feed. <laughs> but my thing is, it's not even racism. That's what's hilarious. A lot of white Americans are, and this is not. For those of you them. who don't know, uh, Godfrey is very pro pro black, as am I. Yeah, uh, we, so, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm I'm pro black, but it's like I call pro black meaning professionally black. We're just professional black guys. So welcome to the Nat Turner show. <laughs> <laughs> that's Tina Turner's brother. Don't go. <laughs> He's the one that didn't make it. But that, yeah. I love yeah. my sister Tina. She be on that bullshit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you were saying. <laughs> Listen, my pro blackness doesn't mean anti anything. No. Pro blackness means you're proud of who you are. That's all. It's like white people are pro white. It's like they're proud of who they are. But, but can they say that? Nah, because their pride comes with hatred. That's what's the mm. fucked up part. When they go pro white, they mean we don't want we don't want to include anybody. Pro black means we just need to be proud of ourselves and stop like you know don't be embarrassed about your skin color, your hair texture, the colorism. Let's stop that. Let's be proud of who we are. Be proud of our culture. Be proud of what we look like. Be proud. That's what pro blackness is. It's just trying to have hope and positivity for us to move on. But we're always inclusive. With white people, you have NAACP, you got all these black groups that have white members in it. How are we How are we anti-white? But then you'll have an all-white group that won't include black people. And they'll say we're pro-white, but pro-white means hatred. But, and, and, but, that's, but that's how you have to understand why yeah. someone would say that that's racist when it's coming from a white perspective, because that's the perspective they understand. Right. That this is pro-white means just white. Right. So that that so well, once you go, understand that though, then you can then you can have the conversation where, different. But that's where racism comes from because when black people try to get a little bit of pride, it's always a threat to white white power. Because even uh, what's his name? Um, shit, J. Edgar Hoover, who was the head of the CIA, who was I part FBI. black? Who was uh, and he was part black by the way. He, he has black heritage. He and he was a cross dresser. <laughs> cross dresser. He said that the biggest threat to American security, to American security, is Negro um, empowerment. Yeah, and he and that's why he created the gangs in Chicago because the gangs in Chicago were made for to to help the community. They organized groups, and then they would send in, and usually they send in one of our people to start fights amongst other people. That's how they broke up the Black Panther Panthers. Party, murdered uh, Fred Hampton, the whole nine. It was, it was him infiltrating that because they go. We can't have, because, okay, also Fred Hampton was getting blacks and whites together. Poor whites and poor blacks were coming together going, yo, man, this is fucked up. They really pitting us again. And then they were like, oh, oh, we can't have this shit. Well, that's the Martin Luther King story black too. Empower- right. But poor, bla- poor black, poor black white. Black empowerment has always been a threat to people. People do not. Our power. People do not like it when we are making improvements. They don't want to see that. That's why they. The Europeans have tried their best to fuck Africa up so badly because Africa has all the potential. They keep, they try to keep all the Africans poor, fighting amongst each other while they steal all the fucking resources and shit like that. They keep Africa fucked up, underdeveloped. They try to. That's what they've been trying to. They've been trying to recolonize Africa because Africa, without Africa, France would collapse. That's what the French president, Jacques Chirac, said if we did not have Africa, because how much does um, France make out of Africa every year? Five hundred billion, I think. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, yeah. This I was, is France. Mm-hmm. They have. They need the cocoa. They get all the resources from Africa. Let me. But let me then, just say. I don't want show you to, images please. of Africa, like when we watch on TV, like they would do in America. And on my parents, Nigerian. My roots go to Nigeria, and my and we used to be like asking my father because they would show images of Africa always fucked up, and my and we'd be like, 
Dad, is is it like are there like cars in Nigeria? It's still like, clearly, and my clearly. father would be like, "What do you mean? We have cars. We have." Every, I said, "Oh, but in TV, they always show." He said, "That's TV. They always show in Africa like we just have flies on our head and all this other shit." Clearly, Purposely school done. doesn't teach you what you know. Where did you mm-hmm. learn all of this? And, and before you answer, okay. let me say uh-huh. this. There's levels to this shit. And I've never claimed to be the smartest guy in the room. Me neither. I think I know what I know. But clearly, uh, this is the next level uh, uh, of, in- of intelligence. Because I'm, okay. I'm learning shit that I've never heard before. Really? Where did you learn all that? All this? Okay. First of all, I learned a lot of stuff from my dad, my father, my relatives, and shit like that, right? When they would tell you stuff about Africa without the TV. You know, because right. TV would just show you the same images. My father said, it's like um, America is the same thing. There are poor places. There are good places. They try to make, so they don't want you to go to Africa. That's what, my father used to always say that shit. And then when we went to Africa, we're like, oh, there's, you know, there's cars and there's nice areas. There's what, um, I learned a lot when I was, especially when I was in college, um, I went to University of Illinois. So, you know, going to see Minister Farrakhan live. You know, I would go see as at 18 years old, I'm going to the mosque on the south side of Chicago. And my parents were even doubtful about Farrakhan because the media had him hating Jewish people and all this. And I didn't know. I was like, I'm interested, you know, because, you know, we knew who Malcolm X was. And Louis Farrakhan was, you know, an underling of Malcolm X when he was Louis X, Louis Walcott from Boston. You know, right. Farrakhan's from... He's from St. Kitts. His gra- his mother is Caribbean. He's from St. Kitts, and him and his brother were violinists. That's why he's such a. I- I've seen that footage of him playing master the violin. violinist. He's been yeah. playing since he was nine. And he was he worked in clubs. Yeah, he was a singer. Yeah, calypso singer. He, he was on like talent shows. He's very he was very Lewis well known Walcott. at that time for that. Yeah, right. there's footage of him right. singing and you know, so. I, I was like, oh, I'm interested. I want to, because when I used to watch stuff about Farrakhan, I go, oh man, this guy looks like an extremist. I don't know. I wasn't sure. So I said, you know what? Because when you get to college, you, you become free thinking. You're, you're like this fake adult, right? You join these groups, the Black Student Union, and yeah, and you start getting free and shit. And white people are fucking <laughs> rebellious and war is bullshit. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. But then you still need a care package from your mom and dad. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Dad, I need more money. I don't have money and shit. Right. I gotta go to this protest. Yeah. So then um I went over, I, I went over to see Farrakhan and I watched. I said, I wanted to see if he's talking about hating Jewish because my, you know, a lot of my mother's friends were Jewish people. I went to a Jewish primary school in Chicago. Edgewater Primary School was a Jewish primary school. I just saw part of your episode with Rudy Israel from uh Yeah, from, I, yeah, I was yeah. Jewish primary school. And um I used to, we used to watch these, um, it's weird. When we were growing up, we were watching this show called The Magic Door. And when I look back, it was Hebrew. It was a Hebrew show. Because they would come, this little man would come dressed as an elf. Open, come open, come open the magic door with your imagination. And he would go, shalom. Shalom means, and I, we would go, shalom. It was Jewish Sesame Street. Yes, and they would have Hebrew letters Yes, Hebrew letters would come on, and we were like, oh, what's that? And that was just part of us. And right. um, so I was like, oh, I hope this guy isn't like a Jewish guy, a Jewish um, community hater or whatever. And then when I listened to Farrakhan, I go, oh, he didn't say anything about hating them. He, didn't, he, he was talking about black. He was literally criticizing black people getting their shit together. You know, you know we got to stop all this, you know, disrespecting women and this, this, that. And now the stuff he was talking about, the Quran, I'm like, I don't really know the Quran like that. I know my parents read the Bible, but I was like, it's all kind of correlated to believing in God. Da, da, da. But I was like, oh, he's just talking about black people getting their shit together. Like we need to get our shit. And then he, when he talked about Jewish people, he talked about the Jewish people he knows that have done like some wrong shit. Like he was calling out black leaders. <clears throat> Jewish, but he wasn't saying, oh, let's get, I, 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 I just I've never to, heard Just to fulfill my soul. Yes. Like a holiday, at mm-hmm. least once a year, I have to YouTube <clears throat> Farrakhan on Donahue. I love it. I he just watched was it. a fucking sniper, I just, wasn't he? Did you see Khalid Muhammad on there? Have you he's seen He's a his little person? too much to no, me but sometimes. You got to watch it because he's so extreme. He's so extreme, but yeah. he comes off like, nigga, it's turn too the much. volume down. Yeah, he's, he's The way he's, Farrakhan sat in that chair. It was amazing. And smoothly, yeah. eloquently, quietly. Just yeah. shot every white person down yeah. who was so offended. They, and, was, they were mad. Uh, mad and yeah. making their point. And he just, 
But you know, like with a silence. You know, it was really good because there were white people that were actually going. There was one white lady. White woman said, "You know what's so funny? This guy has been so he's so eloquent, so whatever." And he said, "You're just trying. You're a very knowledgeable man." And every time you're trying to say something knowledgeable that makes sense, white people are not letting you talk. They're screaming over you. Right. There were some yeah. whites that were really like, he's actually right. And there were white people that were just mad. I love the old white woman who goes, I think what it makes us afraid we, I, is we hear violence. He goes, you know, <laughs> it's so funny that you say you hear violence when you have caused violence, violence. on every person you've, uh, yeah, they say you have been the most violent. Right. And they were quiet. It's like the reason, how you got America, you murdered Native Americans. Raped and pillaged. Raped and pillaged. And you're talking about violence in a neighborhood because people are upset that you're treating us like shit. It's amazing how people get mad that black folks are tired of being treated like shit. Like, we're just like, hey, could you not treat us so badly? And people are like, oh, not this again. My favorite is when a dude said, somebody said, go back to Africa. What does that mean? When you tell someone, go back, yeah. please, please remember, remember where you, you came, came from. Because yeah. if others talk to you about yeah. going back, where, where would, would you go? go? And he says, Woo! he goes, you are not a native, native anywhere. anywhere. You've taken it. And yeah. Ah! Oh! I mean, and this is not, I don't, and if people take this episode as in, oh, then you don't know what the fuck we're t- you're talking about. Because I'm not from, I'm not the nation of Islam. I'm not a Muslim. But I do know guys from the nation of Islam. I have friends that I went to college with. I have a friend, shout out to my boy, Ray Muhammad, who I created. We created a book club, book reading club in my university, an African-American book reading club. We created it at the African-American Cultural Center. We just decided to get together. All these little black students said, hey, man, why don't we just like start reading black books every week? Mm. And we created it. This guy named Ray Westbrook. We created it. Years later, I used to be like, yo, where's my man Ray Westbrook? I haven't seen him in so long. So I went to see Minister Farrakhan's last, his swan song speech last year, February. This year. No, I'm sorry. It was this year in February. I know this is the last day of this year, right? Holy shit. (laughs) I, am I? Am I yeah, saying? Yeah, you, well, the like, yeah, they're hearing it three days later. But okay, the, yeah, d- it's December thirty first, fucking Baltimore. So I saw him in February. It was me, Rakim, Corey Holcomb, uh, Two Chains, and Dougie Fresh. We went to m- the Mosque Marion to see his last. His, his was four and a half hours. Mm. And I don't think it's his last speech. Farrakhan didn't stop. He, you know, he gonna keep coming back. He's like, he's like, oh, a black athlete. Nah, man, bring my retirement <laughs> jersey down. <laughs> right. Uh, so, yeah. Um, what was I? Damn, I was. He went to his last speech. Went to his last speech, and uh, I was just. I had a thought too, and I just fucking damn. Okay, uh, but ahead, while you're trying ahead. to get this thought, yeah. let me let me let yeah. me have a few critiques though into the love fest that we just put out for Farrakhan because I have ultimate respect for Farrakhan. And let me just say, you said Farrakhan. Oh, no. are you Farrakhan? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And was, you said oh, Farrakhan. I was saying though. I wasn't a Muslim or whatever, any yeah, yeah. Of that, but I just listen to him. I take I take things with a grain of salt. I don't agree with everything he says all I, the time. I, I go, agree with oh, that. I take I take it as just a black dude in a racist society, and I just take that to keep me moving along. Speaking for positive black. That's it. And that's I, and, I, I, and, that's I, and, it. I, and I have ultimate respect yeah. for that. I've said it on this podcast. I've got called out for it because I said Farrakhan. Someone just sent me a uh, an email recently. Put some respect on his name. Call him minister. You just heard two other black men call him Farrakhan as well. He's not my minister. We could do that, though. He's not my minister. Yeah. We could do that, He's not though. my minister. Stay He's not my minister. Stay in line. He ain't my minister. But no, it's like, I, well, I if I have to say Rabbi Lebinowitz, now what? I don't just say Lebinowitz. <laughs> then all of a sudden, Lebinowitz, I think it's a grocery store, isn't it? Like, that is- <laughs> <laughs> but... I, I've they met got Farrakhan. Some good yeah. bread. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Really good holla bread. I know. I, 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 I met Farrakhan. Nice, and respectful to me. I yeah. told him I wanted to have a conversation with him. He had no reason to have one with me. He took time to have a conversation. I have no, no problem. You, with you Farrakhan. had a conversation with him. Yeah. He, you met him. Yeah. yeah. Where? Tell me the story. At Saks Fifth Avenue. I was working at Saks Fifth Avenue. This He's is a amazing. Shopper at Saks. And I said, I, I said, Farrakhan got taste. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'd like to buy. Dude, you know Farrakhan is smooth. I'd like to buy the whole floor. <laughs> See, you don't think a black man. See, you think a white man, he's coming in, buying shoes, whatever. I'm buying the whole floor. Mm. 
Now what you going to do? Mm. And I want you and keep the change. Mm. <laughs> you no, saw him at Saks. That's amazing. Saks, he shops. He's a, okay. he's a regular shopper at Saks in New okay. York. Okay. One of the guys from New York retired, came to Arizona, worked mm-hmm. on the floor. He came in, said hi to him. Uh, his name was his name Jerry. You know, Jerry introduced okay. me to him. And great. I said, man, can I have a quick conversation? I just have some questions. He goes, and he just took me, he goes, just give me a moment. I'd love to have a conversation. I'd love to speak with you. Okay. And so we just walked over and I, and I asked him because I had some concerns from my Jewish Which side. Which good, my, but this is good. And, and he answered my questions, you know, respectfully. Yeah. I gave him what I'm my, you know, some questions that I had. He answered in his, re- <laughs> yeah. it was a very respectful conversation. I walked away having, like I said, ultimate respect for him. Positive black imagery. It, it right, goes a long great. way. Did he answer everything eloquently? Every, everything. And just in that same fair tone, relaxed, calm, yeah. smile on his face the whole time. I, I And I, I had a smile on my face because I couldn't believe he took the time to That's, have this with me. So no matter what, I... I what's great is he, I like that he did that because the impact on you is like, damn, he literally talked to me and yeah. said, mm. he wasn't this, get away from me, you anti-Semitic. I don't want the devil right, ever right, touching right, me. Right, right. I'll you come to K- buy something. Khalid, you are my slave. Khalid Muhammad would have done that. But I do, but I... <laughs> don't you touch me, honky. Right. Get I, your I, dirty I, hands I, off me, <laughs> colonial piece of shit. <laughs> Brothers, <laughs> fuck him up. Right. <laughs> but I, I, I do have some issues with, uh, not issues yeah. uh, n- per se, but some of the things that are left out when you talk about the NOI, l- 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 you know, the yeah. wheel mm-hmm. and, and its relationship to Scientology mm-hmm. never get brought up. I think Ooh. that there's some things in there that need to be said Yeah, because that's, it, 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 there's a, a specific to that were, religion. Were they connected to Scientology? Yeah, they, there was he something wants going about Scientology. Oddity, they want you to go to Scientology to get audited. There's some relationship to the to the idea of the wheel, the, the spaceship, and and coming from. Well, I just believe planetary. in Parliament. If you're gonna go spaceship, I only believe in the mothership. Mm. If you hear any noise, <laughs> it's just me and the boys getting it, Dana. Dana, we gonna get in the van. Hey, I, let me, let me, give I a, got give a little mothership bit. connection, hey, y'all. Hey, hey, give I, a little bootsy with the with the thugs. Yeah. Dana, bootsy baby, mother, mother, little baby. Dana. Hey, let's 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 now you know, uh huh. We can't have this man here with me, and we oh, not. Oh shit! And here we, we go. not. We not play a little bit. <laughs> so let's do this. We are gonna do some some tandems. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, it, Andy's gonna interview us. Okay. Oh shit. Richard uh, Pryor and uh, Paul Mooney. Okay. Uh, so see, hopefully, I'm right. you know how your voice yeah, gotta be right. In the, yeah. They don't understand. It's like a tuning. It's, thing. it's, it's an instrument. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You gotta play, okay. do a little scat, jazz yeah, yeah. scat. Okay, let me practice. Let me practice. Nigga, shit, goddamn. Okay, Richard, shit. Richard, Richard, Richard is my friend. All right, here we go. <laughs> okay, uh, shit, goddamn. So, can I ask a question? Go ahead. Hurry yes. up. Goddamn, goddamn, I need some coke. Hey. Uh, 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 Paul, when you write for Richard, are you writing in his voice or Richard, are you performing in, in, in Mooney's voice? Uh, Richard is a goddamn genius. Richard is my friend. I love Richard. Richard knows I don't have to write for him. Richard does what he does. Yeah. And I'm there to capture it, Richard. I don't know. I mean, sometimes shit comes off my head. You know, I just, you know, I improv and shit. And I, I say, say, nigga, I need a new joke. <laughs> and sometimes I need a tag. You know? <laughs> so fuck it. Yeah. So it's it's like a combination. We a team, Jack. We a team of niggas. A writing comedy team, Jack. Nigga, we are a team until you start with that coke and them white pussy. Uh, okay. Listen. Yeah. Hey, motherfucker. Shit. Goddamn. See, this motherfucker like dick. Nobody's telling this motherfucker he gay as shit. You be loving them faggots, Jack. That's Paul, but I love the motherfucker. He's a beautiful motherfucker, though. I've, I've, the only dick I've ever had, Richard, is you know who. Don't make me say it, nigga. Don't make me say it. <laughs> okay, nigga, shit. He sucked my dick right now. <laughs> oh, th- throw, it, now throw in Steve Harvey. <clears throat> okay, okay. He's Steve Harvey. <clears throat> okay. uh, Mooney and Steve Harvey. Okay, Mooney and Steve like, <laughs> Go on, ask your damn question. <laughs> White man, that nigga told you what to do. Do it. I'm these, a, these white people, they, they tell us what to do. And niggas got to jump, jump, jump. <laughs> nigga, ask your question, nigga. See, I'm going to tell your ass right now. I ain't jump for no damn body. You know that. Yeah, I'm going to tell you that. See, family feud. See, I done turned that whole damn <laughs> franchise on his head. 
Okay? No one does shit like Steve Harvey. I'm telling you that right now. Nigga, yeah, I, can, yeah. I can tell you right now, nigga. You can't jump because those lips hold you down. <laughs> oh, I know your ass ain't talking, but guess what? I got how many houses? What you got? You live in a goddamn apartment, boy. See, Paul. that's what you done did. See, Paul, you done ran yourself out of money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Top five answers on the board. Here's the question. Name a motherfucker ain't nobody thought about. Ding! Paul Mooney. <laughs> show ass up. Number one answer. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. That's the game, y'all. <laughs> y'all come back for the family few because he done got his ass whooped. <laughs> okay, okay. Name something Steve Harvey does <laughs> that shit is when crazy. Paul Mooney opens his goddamn mouth. You, you know, Shut you, the fuck up. Ding, ding. All right, here's number one answer. Here's, again. What, here's what's so yeah. great too. Yeah, when yeah. This nigga does Steve. Yeah, yeah. Look at the lips. <laughs> Look at the lips. It's the lips. The, the, the uh, lips and the hands, nigga. What? What? <laughs> and where? I know your ass ain't talking to me, dog. <laughs> Got me fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you do the mustache though? Didn't you put the mustache had, on when I you had, do it oh, on the, the funniest shit when you had the fucking. Music of the game show, nigga. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I, was oh, and you I had did, the mustache. I, <laughs> oh. I had a really ridiculous <laughs> mustache that I just bought. I was at a, a costume shop. I said, oh, that's just a funny-ass mustache. Right. And it was, I said, oh, I'm a bender. This, this is Steve Harvey. So I said, oh, I know I can do Steve Harvey in his sleep. So I play the uh, Family Feud music. Dun, 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 and yeah, it was dun, in his sleep. Oh, that was okay, so funny. You know what? In fact, I have this tablet right here. Let me show you how I did it. And, and it was funny because he was really acting like he was asleep. And what made it so funny was you're hearing the music in the background. And he's, it's it's subtle, but not. But it's it's the subtlety of him being asleep, but still being Steve. Okay. Oh, that was fucking okay, hilarious. Watch, watch this. Watch this. Hold on. Uh, okay. Watch this. Family Feud. <laughs> so I was sitting here like, oh, you can play this all the way. So I'm like. So I'm like, I'm like, so I'm like, oh, survey said, oh, hell no. <laughs> Top five answers on the board. Here's the goddamn question. So I'm, oh. but every now and then, every, I used to you. What? I'm like, what? Where? Why? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just the music. The dog, Yo, that shit was so funny. And cats, the visual with the mustache. Cats oh. was calling me like this. You know when somebody, you know when you do some funny shit and motherfucker call you and they're like, yo, yo, dude, right. what the, right. what is wrong with you, sir? Right, right. Yo, right. what is wrong? Yeah. I've had cats in the street. That's one, that's one thing I love about you being from the New York area and all that. Just, I, that's what I love about New Yorkers. They don't have a problem like le- coming across the street going, yo, my man. <laughs> Yo, son, you that dude, dog. Let me tell you something. I was, in, I was in Brooklyn one time, and a bus driver stopped the bus. Whenever nigga. it's a city worker, you know you want And, and there was people on the bus. He stopped the bus, got off the bus to get a picture. He was like, nigga, yo. I was like, wow. Yes. When city workers are paying attention to you, city workers only think about their pension and getting the fuck home. You're right. And when they go like this, <laughs> yo, you need a ride? Right. My man. Right. They like this. Yo, wait. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know that steering wheel? They like Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yo. Yep. Garbage men are like this. Hey, man. <laughs> yo, you that dude, Right, bro. right. <laughs> you- <laughs> that means you hitting. Like... It's like, yeah. I got go one more. We got one more. We got, t- we got no, some no, more. no, 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 no. One, we more, have t- more, t- one more tandem. One more let's tandem. Go. Right. Now, Andy, go. I really need you to make sure you ask us a few questions. Okay. What do we and do? I know sometimes we get caught up in okay. the impression. I, I get you get caught up in it. I'm caught up in watching you guys okay. do the impression. Right. I'm sorry. Right. What so am I, I know you what do is? a killer Jason Statham. Oh, uh, uh, all right. Okay. And I'm and I'm gonna I'm gonna do uh Tony Soprano. Oh man, you're Tony Soprano. So uh just ask us some questions. Maybe in the vein of unbelievable. We're like trying to plan a hit. Like, just, yeah, oh, oh, okay. oh, 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 right. Hold on, hold on. Let me get this water. Me, 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 me. Okay, here we go. Okay, the yeah. thing that I see that's the difference between you guys is that, uh, Jason, you actually do your hits and you have someone else do them, Tony? I never fucking do the hits for myself. 
I got guys for that. Question for Paulie. You know, fucking Uncle June and Johnny Shaq. If I get caught, then I'm going to fuck a jail. What's going to happen to my kids? Better on AJ. I got to be there for the business. I just know what I'll do. Whenever I see something, I just take it on myself. I don't need a whole bunch of people, a lot of fucking people ruining my shit. You understand what I'm saying? So you rather control it. Yeah, that's what I do. Sometimes I talk to Tony and he gets, sends me the, you know, the assignment. And I do what I do. Do you ever feel weak because you don't do your own and, 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 and he does his own? Or do you, I mean, don't you feel a little, <laughs> what? I'm the fucking boss. The boss of fucking New Jersey. Despite what Uncle June says. If I have a fucking problem, I go to Jason Statham. He makes it nice and fucking clean. So fucking average. I'm back home for the fucking barbecue. It makes sense. I never thought of it that way. And you should. And don't ever question me again. Otherwise, <laughs> you'll end up in a truck of a car and a fucking beaker weed. <laughs> What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Uh, let's see. I like chocolate. I like Neapolitan. I like to mix it up every once in a while. That's and yours? It's definitely not chocolate because of the fucking niggas. <laughs> <laughs> But everything else, you know, I like the, I like the fucking vanilla. I like the whipped cream and the fucking shakers. <laughs> fucking eggplant flavor. They fucking eggplant. Eh? And they got a new ice cream called mozzarella. Can fucking wait. They should come out with Italian flavors. <laughs> fucking strawberry and then I got. Oh fuck. <laughs> It's only so funny because you could oh, see Tony Soprano dude, say I, it. It's so good. I did. Oh, that's it's good. Yeah. So this is what we do. Ice cream. I don't eat too much ice cream. As you can tell, he eats a lot of ice cream. I go, take the shit fucking fuck me. Fucking ice cream. Because <laughs> we're talking about ice cream. It's so fucking stupid. You know, this fucking guy's got a fucking six pack. He's got a fucking body like a fucking, fucking tank. Well, me, I bathe in ice cream. I lather in it. Yeah, stay. I gotta stay in shape. I gotta stay in shape. <laughs> last question. Last question. Jason, we see you're a good guy yes. who does bad things, and yeah. we don't see you getting all that much ass, but Tony is knocking shit <clears throat> over left and right. Tony, do you do you do you have an insecurity that you need to fuck that many women? It's not about an insecurity. I run the fucking bottom bank. The broads can't even work there unless they suck my dick. <laughs> Listen, I have one woman, that's all I need. All right, all that other shit is bullshit. They're all nothing but trouble. So just like on the telly, you see me, I do things by myself. One woman, one mission. That's it. You know, we got to change that. <clears throat> all you got to do is come out of a bank, a couple of dollars. You get your dick rubbed. And then I get a fucking uh, STD. <laughs> Have you ever been fucked by a shine? <laughs> Black girls, they got the best fucking pussies. You're the worst. Their pussy lips look like fucking. <laughs> their pussy looks like fucking steak of meat. We gotta try a fucking black chick. Some fucking believer. Oh, dude, that Wait, Jason a... Statham man. Yeah, and that was me. It's like an off. It's oh. kind of off right now. It's kind of off. That right sounded now. accurate as fuck. I do Statham, but not like that. Yeah, you know not what's like funny that. is I did Statham. I did a a voice. You know how you do voiceover sound alike, an audition. Yeah, I did it exactly like him, and I didn't get it. <laughs> it was too much like him? I don't know. I, they were like, we need a sound alike. And it's like one line. Somebody goes, I think I think this guy murdered him. It's like real quick line. I think this is murder. That's what I'm thinking. You know, and I did it exact and I didn't get it. <laughs> this business is fucking stupid. That is crazy, man. And that's, that's why so we back on this. <laughs> I tried my best to do that goddamn Jason Statham, whatever the fuck his name is, transporter, whatever the fuck. And my ass, three times trying to do him. Perfect. Didn't get no goddamn job. <laughs> Five things Steve Harvey ain't going to do for your ass. Audition, audition, audition. <laughs> why? Where? <laughs> for what? <laughs> I don't know why I just keep God going. God damn, man. <laughs> <laughs> we got, wait, who, 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 there's more people, right? Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> we got uh, more people. Well, we both do. do Co- How about do Cosby's both coming back? Do Cosby, both I, okay. Cosby, both okay. Cosby, okay. Okay. Cosby's. Well, okay, Cosby. <clears throat> I'm not Cosby. asking questions. You well, guys, Cosby said he's coming back okay. on the road for 2023. Yeah. yeah, I want to see that. I, Fuck, I, what he's going to pack it out. But do you think he'll talk about it? To eat better, I'm a heckle Cosby. Oh, uh, I will heckle Cosby. I'm like, hey man, we you know why the fuck we here. When's the last time you seen Cosby, though? I uh, saw him about seven, eight years ago. Okay, at I did the too. But- at the Bordega, Bodega, uh, the Bordega, Bordega, 
Bordeaux, you know, what is that? casino. Bo- oh, oh yeah, the Borgata, Borgata. Is it Borgata? Nigga say a bodega. Yeah, Borgata. You're thinking about a place in Brooklyn, nigga. Niggas rolling dice <laughs> by a quarter water. Yeah, and if I if I come up with a name, it's a big problem because on this podcast, everybody knows I can't remember shit. I said the first thing Cosby's gonna do when he gets on stage, he's like, I'm free. <laughs> Was he dressed? I'm free. Was he wearing sweatpants when you saw him, though? He was wearing a sweater and pants. Just real simple. Swe- and had dirty sweatpants, microphone. man, when I saw him on stage just in the chair. Dirty sw- sweatpants? Dirty sweatpants and a t-shirt. Dirty ones. D- they had a stain, like, on the knee area right there. Damn. One knee, so we weren't thinking that anything weird was going right. on. It was just well, one. Yeah, he was, he was genius. he was outside the window looking at a lady. <laughs> He was on his knee, <laughs> looking through the window, going, I'm going to fuck her, and she doesn't even know it. See, let me tell you something, what happened. You see, Elder, they were lying. It was bullshit. All of them, it never they, was the truth. Because, see, back in the day, in the you day, see, when somebody wanted somebody to have a job, in the job you, 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 have, you have cocaine, the, the, you got the, the heroin, you got the quail, you got the methamphetamine, and it was like a candy store. Yo, and you, the girl would say, hey, Mr. Cosby, I would like to be on the show. Oh, and I go, well, you got to pick what your candy's going because to be. Because you're not going to be able to do what you want to do uh, when you, you want to do it. That's what I'm saying. See? And so I go, hey, hey, hey. It's and I said, <laughs> and you see, and so this is what the thing that is weird. I to me. said what so you mean. I say to her, What did I say, you say? I say, take the job, and do and do. Who's on first? And that's where it comes, and you because take the ball. Because the thing's on then, second, and who's then, on third. And this is what I'm trying to say. You gotta know what you and mean. And then I go like this here comes the pudding. Oh, the whole Okay, wait, wait. Try this. Just, yes, just, for, just yes. for fun. Just for fun. Try this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll establish there's a girl and you guys are at Whoa. dinner. Okay. Yes. One, I don't know who wants to be the good and who wants to be the evil. De- I don't want to be evil. evil. I don't want to do anything that's going to uh, objectify women. I'm not doing that shit. Good cop, bad cop. I'm bad cop. So I'm being Cosby. You're being okay. good yes. Cosby. I'm good Cosby. You're bad. Yeah, bad you Cosby. be bad Cosby. Right. Fuck that. Okay. Right. So there's a woman sitting there. Okay. Yes. You guys are at dinner. <laughs> She's there, and, and you're just having this moment where you're looking at her, right? And okay. uh, good, good Cosby. I'll say, hey, I just want to say that you look wonderful today. I, I like you, what you're wearing. I'm just wondering if you enjoy the meal. You can order whatever you want to do. <laughs> I would love to see you pull your panties down. <laughs> so that's your your internal monologue. Internal, yes. Yeah, and I think this woman is beautiful. Yeah, I think you are a flower. You are part of but the planet. Of that. The titties. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, we're, we're going. We're, we're just gonna, we're just gonna get Cosby to come after us. Cosby like this. So I heard I you like, both I, on the podcast. I was like I said, so you think you're slick, huh? But Who see, was the bad one? Because I didn't like that one. You see, <laughs> it's like you know I'm free. That's right, and I can come and get you. Yes, and I got the fucked up eye. I don't even know which one I'm looking at. God free. <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. I, I, I was switching back to some uh, talkative <laughs> shit. Um, this movie, man. Uh, uh, which one? Emancipation. Have you seen it? I haven't seen Emancipation yet, and I just was just like, I kind of was. I mean, and Will Smith. Well, first of all, wait, 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 let me let me well, stop. Okay, go ahead. Because okay, I know you Nigerian. Yes. I said I refuse to see another movie with Will Smith doing an accent. I, I, I can't. Because after <laughs> confession, <laughs> tell the truth. And I was like, Godfrey is African. Let me ask Godfrey. How horrible was that? Concussion. Concussion. Yeah, I, I, I just because I interviewed the doctor that Will Smith played. Amalu. I actually interviewed a real guy. Right. He looks, Will Smith looks nothing like him. Well, nobody, no, no, no actor looks He's like, exactly. right. He, he's a, Dr. Amalu, who is a Nigerian guy who found out about the CTE in the NFL. Yeah. I saw the real documentary where they kicked him out. The NFL literally threatened this dude, said, We don't need you doing any more research. He goes, But there's a thing going on in the men, in the, from all the damage, and CTE happens early in like, Pee Wee League football, the brain damage happens. Because the brain isn't even developed fully right. yet. And that's when it's so started. he noticed this the patterns of the the dead football players had the same patterns that were going on, neurological patterns. So he got so they replaced that brother. He had to leave. And so I was like, I just I was watching some scenes of concussion 
And I was like, I can't. I can't. I, Will well, Smith. Let, and let, I love let, Will Smith. Let, let me say that to say this. You have a concussion. You got the deal to do. <laughs> but, but let me say this. I I I I I was wary. It's of, like Forrest Whitaker in Black Panther. You didn't you didn't like his? Accent? No, no. He, Black Panther. His his <laughs> wait, wait, powers wait. have been stripped away. <laughs> his powers have been stripped <laughs> away. <laughs> I was like, I love Forrest Whitaker, right. but his powers, the Black Panther. His powers have been stripped away. I Listen, like, I, was, I don't want to get off topic okay, with this, but on, let me just sorry, say this. Sorry. I have to say this because you did that. And you know, I love me some Denzel. Oh, one yeah. of the greatest actors of all time. Oh, he's the best. But nigga, the mighty, not the mighty Quinn. I could have shot your ass. That nigga goes in and out, in and out of that Jamaican <laughs> accent. Nigga, they, I, I said to Andy, there was one point, and you know, anytime somebody does a Jamaican it was, accent. It was Robert Townsend right, and, 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 and Denzel, Denzel Washington. You know, anytime somebody does a Jamaican accent, they put emphasis on mon. Hey, mon. <laughs> so there was one part where Denzel said something about when you go there and then you have to go upstairs. <laughs> Like, like, and this is one of the greatest actors of all time. Yeah. But let me get back to, uh, no, to no. Emancipation. So I said to myself, because of concussion, uh, mm -mm. and I know Will does an accent in this movie. And when you watch it, you find out he's from Haiti. So it's a right. Haitian accent. It's a Haitian accent, yeah. This movie was great, man. I heard it's great. It's great. And his accent, I don't know, I don't know a Haitian accent, so I don't know how accurate it was it's, or was it. I know how it, it sounds. But it was great. It was brutal. Yeah. And it was great. Uh, it's a hell of a watch. A lot of people say it's really good. I just, I just, it just, I thought about when I saw, watched the poster of Emancipation, you see the poster? Yeah. And he's like this, you know, right. and there's dirt on his face. It reminded me of when he yelled at his father, the hell with him! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You I'm gonna, give me like nice, I'm gonna get that. a nice honey. I'm, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna graduate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some nice kids, and I'm gonna do anything all by myself. The hell with him? Why don't he want me, man? Yeah, that's what I think they had. That he, that's right. when they took the picture. Right. They were like, "Hey, Will, can you do the scene you did <laughs> in Fresh Prince?" And he has dirt on his face. The hell with him? <laughs> 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 I heard it was fantastic. So why haven't you seen it then? What, what's the holdup for you? I'm just, I got to get in the mindset for slavery. Uh, I just, <laughs> it's, it's, I'm, yeah, I like a white guy. Why didn't you want to watch that slave movie? Ah, uh, you know, a little tired of the slave right, thing. Right, Just one, because I, yeah. I have to get in the mindset. Right, oh, right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Turn that off. I'm sorry. That was, okay. My bad. Oops. Jesus Christ. Is that, is that the TV too loud too? No, no, no. No, no. Even no. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, um, yeah, I have to get in the mindset. At any any time it's a like an Emmett Till story, or any because you know you've heard of of all these stories already, and I just got to get in a mood for a slave movie. It's just you got to get in that mindset. I'm not in the mood right now to you know. I'd rather watch you know Blade fuck up some vampires. I'm in the mood. Did for you like, see Till? No, I don't yeah, want to. Saw Till. Yeah, uh, I don't. I know the story of Till. We all do. He's from Chicago. We all do. We all know it. And then you got to reenact it. I'm like, we know what's going to happen. I'm like, right. okay, when does the kid get drowned? You, you know? know, Andy. Andy brought to my attention, and we talked about this. Uh, and no disrespect episode. to the Till like story at and all. Like, I just, we, we, you got to get in that mindset yeah. for that. But there was a documentary called the what? What was the watermelon thing called? Uh, what? Uh, I, I, it's some about it's okay to eat. God, what was it called? How to eat your watermelon in front of wa white people? In front of white people? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Did you yeah. see? There's a document about Melvin no. Peoples. Oh, Melvin Van Peoples. Mel Melvin Van Peoples, and it's called How to Eat Your Watermelon in Front of White People and Not Feel and, and Like It and Like It and Like It, right? And one of the things he said about you know uh, being in Paris, in France, he was like, you know, in America, in the movies, black men are expected to, uh, you know, show their pain. Victims, yes. be the victim, be the yeah. victim. Yes, scream, yell. Yeah, and I and I said to Andy, it's so crazy to me that I would think as a white person, when you look at the horrific shit that they have done to us, why would you want to perpetuate that? Because it makes you look evil yeah. and like a piece of shit. That has to be a power trip for you to go. Let's keep making slave movies. Let's show how we just brutalize black people, rape them, fuck yeah. them over. Wouldn't you think as a white person you'd go? I don't, want to, I don't want to make no more slave movies because it makes us look bad. Yeah. Or is that just the power trip to go, th this is the power we had over I you? I think it's the power because I don't think it's a, 
Oh, well, yeah, they can say, well, because slavery is like the main, the most, like that's the atrocity that they always bring up. But the thing is that they don't show in slave movies is the real atrocities that happen to slaves. They'll show you the whipping and all that. But what, are they going to show you sodomizing black men in front of their families? Mm. Are they going to show you um, when they would tie um, slaves' legs to two horses and the horses Jesus. would go in different directions? Do they show you cutting open um, uh, pregnant uh, black women's stomachs and stomping the fetus? Do they show that? Do they show any of that shit? So they don't even show the real atrocities Jesus. of slavery because you wouldn't be able to handle it. Quentin Tarantino came closest and he had to do it in a comedy. Right, which was brilliant, by the way. That, that fucking Django, Django Unchained was, it was funny. <laughs> it was, but, but it was but, also but, but a little was, bit of a fantasy because, it was a, it, it, because right. Nat Turner existed, Yeah, but he was Nat Turner on steroids. Yeah, it was Nat Turner on steroids. So it was, you know, Tarantino is like that. He's so... To me, brilliantly crazy. Yeah. Who would you rather work with, Tarantino or Scorsese? Scorsese. Really? Why? I love Scorsese. I just love Over Wade. Tarantino? Yeah. Scorsese. I love Scorsese first, and I love Tarantino, but it's Scorsese, Spike, Tarantino for me. For me, it's anybody who wants to give me a shot. Anyone. Yeah, and I, I, I like and Oliver Stone. I like guys that think outside but the Oliver box. Oliver Stone hasn't been... I know, I know. I'm just saying back yeah, in the day, like right. um, any given Sunday... I mean, a lot of his movies were like just the way he sh his shooting style. Right. Oliver Stone is like Brian De Palma. But De Palma, I'll fuck with all right. that whole crew. Any right. of them call me, I'll be like, "What's up?" Right. I'm Scorsese. What's up? <laughs> and I've met Tar. Oh, did I tell you about my Tarantino story? No. Oh my god. So okay, <laughs> you almost did state the. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god! I'll yeah. tell you about my Tarantino story. Tarantino story. So I. <laughs> that shit is crazy, man. So I saw him on the street. I'm just minding my business. Right up the road. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to tell it and say it all Jason Jason's data. <laughs> but I, I'm walking on like A Street in New York. And, I, and I, I'm like, oh, damn, there go Tarantino. He's in, oh, in a cafe outside. And I just go like this. Mr. Tarantino, man, a big fan. He goes, hey, man, how you doing, man? Cool. You know, I go, uh, I say, I'm a big fan. I go, and he goes, hey, what do you do, man? What do you do? I go, I'm a comedian. He goes, dude. I fucking love comedy. I fucking love comedy. I go, really? I go, yo, have you heard of the Comedy Cellar? It's right down the street. He goes, oh, there's a comedy club down the street. He goes, I fucking love comedy, man. When are you going to be there? I think I'm You know how the story ends? I go, I go, I go, I go, I go, I'm there almost every night. But we're like, dude, I'm going to fucking come and see you, man. What's your name? God Godfrey. I'm going to come and fucking see you. Did he see, see you? you? Hold on. So... <laughs> You know, weeks later, I never see him again. I go, okay. So then I'm, I see him again in New York. I saw him again. I go, yo, Mr. Tertito, what's up? He goes, G you Godfrey, right? Dude, I said I'm going to come and see you at the, the comedy cell, right? I'm coming. I love, I'm coming. I'm fucking coming. I promise you I'm coming. I promise you, man, I've been busy doing all kinds of things. Y'all, I don't know when, what date this was, but... I'm in at the Comedy Cellar. I'm hosting the show. It's like one in the morning. A waitress comes running at me going, why is my favorite director outside looking for you? I go, what? Quentin Tarantino is looking for you outside. I go, get the fuck out of here. I go outside. He goes, I fucking told you I was coming. I took that fucker hung out with me till four in the morning. He watched you perform? The, he watched me perform. We went upstairs. We ate wings. We sat around me. I can tell you who was there. My boy, Ron Long, who's a musician. It was, Pat. it was all these people. And Tarantino is telling us about the movies he wrote. He's talking about, he's about to write Kill Bill. He's like, I'm, I'm, I got to go to China. I'm trying to finish this movie called Kill Bill. I hung out Did with him. Did he put you in a movie? Nope. And there also, we go. And there it is. Well, then I saw him again in Los Angeles. I went to some dinner or whatever. And I was going to some place to meet somebody. It was like an, a, a, a producer on something. And you know those in LA when they have those places that look like actual residential houses, but they're actual restaurants? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went on Sunset or somewhere, and I walk in, and I see him again. And he goes, and he, and you know, I'm walking in. Nobody's paying attention to me. Tarantino's was like, yo, Godfrey, what's up, man? The whole place goes, who the fuck is this guy that knows Tarantino? So I go up to his table. I'm like, oh, what's up? He's talking about his band of brothers production company or whatever. 
blah, blah, blah. We talk, and then I go back and sit where I'm, and everyone's like, who's that guy that knows fucking Tarantino? Uh, he never put me in a film. Nah. <laughs> Let me tell you my story. You got a Tarantino no, story? No, but, okay. but someone of high caliber. Yeah. So I leave an audition in Studio City. I'm in my truck. I, I'm at Is a, that the Jordan Peele one? No. Okay. I met a light. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's funny as fuck. I met a light. Uh, this SUV pulls up next to me. Uh-huh. Uh, the windows are tinted. I can't see who it is, but I yeah. can see enough that he's going, mm-hmm. roll your window down. I roll my window down. It's Mark Wahlberg. Dope. And I heard from Alex Bornstein from Mad TV, who was a castmate on the show, that uh, he's a huge fan of Mad TV. Right. So he goes, dude, you, you, yo, you a funny motherfucker, yo. You a funny motherfucker, yo. I said, yo, shit, yo, blah, blah, blah. I go, yo, let me, you know, let's switch math. And let me say, I got to, you know, call me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay, cool, boom. I get the number. That's it. <laughs> Nothing ever. And that's it. <laughs> I, I, it's, I, I just, I'm like, this is the world's biggest tease. You hung out with Quentin. Y'all eating chicken. Y'all yep, talking. Yep. Y'all hanging uh-huh. out. He saw you perform. He knows how powerfully funny you are. Mm-hmm. Mark Wahlberg. I didn't chase him and go, uh-huh. I'm a fan. He told me, uh-huh. roll your window down. You're a funny motherfucker. W- what's going on, man? The director, the director of, I uh, remember Green Book? The Green, Green Book. Book, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, he saw me perform because my manager knows him. My manager has a client that was in that movie. He saw me perform, murdered at the Laugh Factory. I mean, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I performed in front of Joe Pesci. I tell you my Joe Pesci story. No. <laughs> So you Jew, motherfuck you. Yeah, low, low. So Laugh Factory, you know, sometimes superstars walk into the Laugh Factory. Everybody's like, "Yo, Joe Pesci's in the in the room, man. He's sitting at the comics table right. with this big ass goomba motherfucker, just like." And Joe Pesci is there, so everybody's bombing, like, and it's not packed. It's one of those nights. It's not right. packed, so <laughs> everybody's bombing. They like, they're like, "Dude, man, Joe Pesci making me nervous, bro. Fuck that." And so, God, I was last, right. And all I did was make fun of Joe Pesci. I was like, fuck it. I was like, Joe, man, you in the room. I said, F-. I said, let me tell you something about you, Joe, man. I could watch you do it. I could, it could be a movie called Ice Pick. And I will right. fuck it. And he's dying laughing. I could just watch you stab a motherfucker for two hours. You motherfucker, you motherfucker. <laughs> you cleared the fucking blood. You right. I could, I could do watch Ice Pick 2. Right. Joe Pesci again. <laughs> Could you I watch, could you watch eight, eight Heads in a Duffel Bag? I can watch all that shit. <laughs> I like that movie. It was funny. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. But Joe, but Joe or, or Renaissance Man. No, what was it? Was it Renaissance Man? He was the super? Was it the super? I don't know, but if it ain't Home Alone or a good or a good fellas. Let me tell you something. Or a casino. Or any mob. Yeah. Movie. Any mob. But I Pesci, I just was making fun of him. I just I, I don't remember all the other jokes, but I was talking about De Niro and I just, and I had him dying laughing. You know, I just said, fuck it. I'm going in. After the show, <laughs> Pesci comes out. He's getting into a car and shit. And he goes, hey, hey, come here. Come here. Yeah. It's like, you're a funny motherfucker. You're a funny motherfucker. If you ever make fun of me again, I'll kick your black ass all the way down the fucking street. Hilarious. I go, I just got insulted. He goes, I'm just fucking with you. I mean, right. And the big goomba goes, he's like, yeah, you're fucking hilarious. He was fucking hilarious. <laughs> Right. It was fucking hilarious. <laughs> I like I like the head tilt and the whole yeah, body like, movement. Yeah. When you're doing a fucking Italian, it, 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 it's Italians, gotta come there's up. a lot of there's she a lot of, a lot of there's niggas, a lot of shit, a lot of nigga movements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You a know? lot of energy. Yeah, yeah, with, with he goes, hey, that was fucking hilarious. I was fucking dying. The fucking black guy was, <laughs> that was fucking not, believable. Hey, hey, dude, I don't laugh a lot. A lot of guys aren't that great. <laughs> Last but time I fucking laughed, I fucking, got a guy's fucking yeah, throat. Right. I'm gonna tell you. He I make a funny. good sauce. It came out of me. You need fucking gravy. Just Tell about the gravy. fucking gravy. Let me tell you. I got, I got a Chaz Palmiteri story. Well, before you do that, let okay. me tell you my Eddie Murphy story. Oh, oh, beautiful. So oh. I'm, I'm at the last factory. <laughs> and it's hey, before you do this, can I just not be outdone? Uh, some lady in Timonia, Maryland, told me I was funny last night. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Hey! <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, this guy. <laughs> Interrupting your fucking show. The fucking what you, Jews. Well, you're, like, you're like a comma in a fucking sentence. You interrupt things. Or a bunch of fucking dots <laughs> that don't lead to nothing. <laughs> yeah, dot, dot, dot. Dot, this dot, guy and what? Get the fuck, the fuck your punctuation. Fuck this Get guy. the fuck out of here. <laughs> Should fucking choke you with your own beard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep talking, Jew boy. <laughs> All right. Remember, we're joking, guys. <laughs> yes, we're joking. Yeah. We're joking. 
I'm we, feeling we did, nervous. We did, we did the N word. We we're we're racially sprinkling everything. Yes, even yes. Like, <laughs> don't worry, the Asians are coming. Just wait there. Your oh, we're gonna coming. get to you, fucking guys. You won't even see us because your eyes are three quarters closed. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, so um, it's 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 me and Dean Edwards at the Laugh Factory Uh-oh. On, on Chocolate Sunday. Uh oh. And, and Pookie comes up and goes, "Look, man, I know y'all. One of y'all got to go up. Uh, I don't know who's gonna go up, but Eddie's here. Oh no, I can only put one of y'all up. Oh, so God, like, which I want to do. And you know, I wish I could whistle well, but it was almost like that spaghetti western you hear. Yeah, it was. You know, so we just, so we just looking at each other. Uh-huh. And we like, what's up, man? Because we this is Jordan. Jordan's here. Unless we, you we, split in the time and being fair to each other. No, 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 no. no. Niggas, <laughs> I gotta go. No. So, so, so we're like, Jordan's I'm doing here. My special right. in front of us. So you know, nigga, want to get in the game? Show the moves. Yeah, yeah. So we flip the coin. I won, yeah. and I and I get up, and Eddie's sitting in the top balcony. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I was nervous as a motherfucker. I think I heard this. And and I, you know, I did okay, but I was yeah. nervous. Of course. Yeah. Um. And you know, it's funny because Eddie, we know in the movies, Eddie's laugh is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in real life, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that, yeah, <laughs> that, <it's true. laughs> that, that's how he really laughs. So he chuckled a couple times, and he was with his, uh, he was with Ray Murphy, Ray, his uncle. that Uncle Ray, that and was I've my been, boy. I, I've been knowing Ray. Damn. So afterwards, uh, it's over. I call Ray, and I go, Yo, Ray, what did what did Eddie think? And he said, Eddie was like, uh, You know, I think I make these young motherfuckers nervous, man. Cause that dude is funnier than that, you know. He's very funny. He's very funny. tonight. It's like something was wrong, and he was. He's usually funnier than that. Wow, he said that. Yeah, and you know what's so funny? Cause his voice is so groggy now. He can't yeah. hit the high note. I, yeah, right. Cause you, when I watched you, I watched some old um, Matt TV shit, and you're doing oh, that. Oh, you sounded oh. exact. Oh, was, like um, your statham, nigga. It was unbelievable. I right. said, it's just. Yeah, you know what? I got the this. I got the Pacino thing now. Yeah. Like, remember Pacino oh, and Serpico? His, his voice was high. Yeah, Godfather. Like this, but now show, he was like, like that. Yeah, but now it's, it's like, oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. you. Yeah. So he's out what he said? Yeah, he said, I, that dude is usually funnier than that, but I think I make this well, how about How about Pookie? Don't tell us he's in the audience, you ass. Huh, Pookie? I don't know if you don't not notice that. Yeah, but do you nah. do you, you don't want to know, right? I don't want to. I don't want to know. know. I don't want to. You would want to know. I, yeah, Gerard. But I've been friends with Gerard Butler for eleven years now. Um, I saw him a few weeks ago. He called me. He was in town. Right. And you know how I met Gerard Butler through Quentin was, Tarantino. No, <laughs> I was <laughs> I was making fun of Three Hundred, and he was in the audience. Really? I in, at the cellar. I was like going about Three Hundred. I was like, because that's when Three Hundred was hot. Right. I was like. We have to fight. And I go, and I'm like, there's probably a soldier going, hey, man, you got to keep it down. We're trying to sneak attack. A little, <laughs> just a little loud or that. I know Leonidas, yo, shh, come here. Can you right. doing sneak attack, right? Mm. Got to keep it down. Right. You know, I'm fucking around. And then Gerard comes out and goes, fucking dude, did you know I was downstairs? You didn't know? He's, you know, he's Scottish. Right, right. He's like, what the fuck? That was the funniest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Right. We got to be friends, man. We have to be friends, man. Hilarious. And now, been friends for... T- and then, now, what, listen. Gerard comes to see me. I, I've hung with Gerard. Been at his crib. Hang out. Buddy, where you at, man? I'm fucking here. Boom. Has a production company. <laughs> I, <laughs> I've told him, listen, Gerard. People are like, how the fuck aren't you in anything with Gerard? But like, oh, first of all, I'm, it let, I let people get established first. I go, Gerard. And I told them like a couple weeks ago, I said, Gerard, you got a fucking production company. I'm getting a little tired of this shit. I can't be the fucking black dude that goes, hey, don't run on my floor. Right. <laughs> right, right. You know, okay. you know, which way did he go? I think he went that way. Right. I can't <laughs> get that. I can't get up. You know, like, hey, my man, you dropped my. My soda. All the shit niggas say in movies. <laughs> Come on, God damn. Woo. He's like this. That's one fast white boy. Mm. <laughs> Man, she loves you. You better go get her. <laughs> I can't do the black sidekick whole right. thing. He's like this. Yo, my man, you got to show empathy, dog. That's all I'm saying. He said that? No. I can't. Oh, I said, yeah, I like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying I can't get. Dude, Hollywood, goes, uh, Hollywood yeah. Yeah. is like the biggest female pussy tease, nigga. Like, we can yeah, smell yeah. it, we can almost feel it, but we can't fuck it. 
It, it's just, we get near it. it. It's just, what the fuck, man? It's, it, I don't understand that. Dude, he invited me to, remember, unlaw, um, unlawful, um, lawful shit. Uh, un, uh, unabiding citizen. Lawful citizen. Shit. This is why you can't get a part. <laughs> <laughs> can't remember our fucking titles. He, it was him and Jamie Foxx. Jamie plays a lawyer. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Un, yeah. Lawful citizen or some shit. Um, law-abiding citizen. So I, he calls me. He goes, Godfrey, I'm in Philadelphia. I'm filming blah, 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 blah. It's his production company. Right. You got to come. You got to hang out. I come to the fucking set. Uh, and Jamie's there. He didn't say shit to me. Okay. I'm like, all right. I thought I knew him. Yeah. Okay. And he didn't say shit to me. I was like, okay, okay. But then Gerard, we hanging out, you know, and I'm just hanging out with him and I'm, watch, I'm in his trailer. He's, I'm watching another movie he's about to do, you know, and all kinds of shit. And I hung out with him and went back. <laughs> I go, why can't I ever be in any of your shit? I'm just, I just, you got to ask. And he goes, you know, he was like, I'm trying, if I find the right part, I swear to God. And he says, how are you good with, you know, how are you as an actor? I go, in my head, am I better than you? Huh. I'm like, in my head, I'm, like, I'm better than you. <laughs> I had some good acting teachers. I, you, you let me get on a set because a lot of people have gotten, you know, who has, who's never went to acting school. Uh, was it Ewan McKellen? Is it Ian uh, McKellen? Uh, Ian Mc, yeah. Ian McKellen. Um, um, I think um, it is Ian. Magneto. Yeah. Magneto, he, I was just watching a little, he was doing a little a speech and he was like, oh, lots of people. He's went a good to, actor. He's unbelievable. Yeah. He goes, lots of people have gone to traditional acting schools. I, I never went to one. Right. I, what I did was I watched life. I watched life, I imitated life. That's what you do sometimes. Just watch, sit on a bus and watch life. He never went to acting school. And so I was, I had acting teachers. I studied it. I mean, I'm not intensely, but I went to the Beverly Hills Playhouse for six months in LA. I um, went to Strasburg. You went to Strasburg? Yeah. The, um, what was it? Um, Beyonce's mom's new husband was my teacher, Rob Richard Lawson. Mm. The guy who was married to Beyonce's mother now was my teacher for six months. So, right. and, and some other teachers too. But I, I had um, Alice Spivak, may she, may she rest in peace. Um, Alice Spivak um, was a, a legendary New York um, acting teacher who was friends with Ruby D, right. very good friends Ruby D and Ozzie Davis. I had her. I had um, I had Joanna Bexson for for sitcom acting with Steve Byrne. Me and Steve Byrne took the class. Um, I, I've done some, you know, but it's to me you get better as you're on on a set. You get better on a set. You get better doing the work. Also, I'm not saying you you should pra um, study acting. Of course, dude. I used to think I but, was the only one who felt this, but like, I'm to me, I'm I'm horrible at auditions. And I oh, sometimes and I, I, I and, suck and I, ass. I remember the brother. Uh, God, he was in. Uh, he, you just mentioned that movie. Uh -huh. He was in the movie about uh, Law by Citizen. No, no, no. Uh, Any given Sunday. Fred Hampton. What oh, was that movie? Panther? No, Not Panther. Oh, oh, oh. You know what I'm talking about? With, with guy, yep. Got the Fred guy, um, Daniel Kalua. He right, played he played Fred Hampton. Hampton. Yeah. The other guy that played the one that killed him. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Lakeith Stanfield. Yes. He said, uh, dude, I'm, I, I, I suck at auditions. And I used to think that yeah. I just was it's like, not because, no, yeah. it's a hard It's very difficult. Thing. And, but I feel like once I get the part. Oh, that's different. And I'm in the playland. I'm in but the, that's I'm in, what make, that's what separates everybody. It's like, People who can who are really good at tests, but they're actually smart. And when you know, like when you're testing for something, right? Anxiety, you don't do a good test, but you're really good at math. But maybe when you test, you fucking suck at it because there's a pressure. Yeah, I get really nervous. But like I said, once yeah. I get on set, I'm in the play. I'm I'm a kid in a candy store because they're giving you a chance. Because they're giving you a chance. You get to redo it. You have a director going, okay, let's do it this way. But let's not just that. that. Even if nobody says anything, the moment I hit a set, I'm looking at. What can I play with? What yeah. can I use? What yeah. can I improvise but with? But you can't do the it. Surrounding, it's, the surrounding, I feel it. The, the reason I think auditions are, are, are nerve-wracking is because you're trying to get a job. You hope you get a job. You're going against motherfuckers. You understand? You get maybe two, three minutes. You understand? There's people in the room like, all right, go. And really looking at you it's like, a, you yeah, know. It's really, and you're like, do they like me? Oh, fuck, who's looking at me? That, it's the pressure, the way they set it up for you to fail. I think they set up auditions for you to fail. And there's a book I called- think I know this book. Michael Shirtliff's Audition. It's called Michael Shirt. It's, a, it's a, a classic book called Michael Shirtliff's Audition. Remember Samuel French, the drama yes. bookstore? 
I remember in New York when I was trying to get that book, it was sold out. I we had to wait like a month for them shit to get reordered. It's called Michael Shirtlift's Audition and teaches you about auditioning and say, getting the part and auditioning, two different things. And they always say, make sure you bring yourself to the part. Don't try to be somebody else doing this part. What would you do to this part if it were you? Be as relaxed, be yourself. Don't try to be all, and that's what they were saying. And always have your sides in your hand. Even if you know the script, right. have it in your hand. See, I've always been told, go off book. No, off book with the shit in your hand because they respect that. Because let's say you're thinking, because a lot of times people, unless your memory is so fucking good, have it in your hand because in the audition, you might get a little nervous. You might think you're worried about memorizing the lines. Right. But if you just are, you know the script, they know when you know the script. Like if I'm holding this, right? If I'm, if I have a script in my hand, I'm auditioning, right? And I go, and I'm doing this. I told you. What the fuck did I tell you? I said the money has to be in the in the box, and you fucked it up. So what the fuck am I supposed to do? They know you know the script. Right. That's off book. Like, let's just say you you just look down. That's not affecting anything. They said, have the script just in case. Let's say you, you're a little off, and you go, you know what? I don't got time for this shit. I asked you, and I asked you. But don't, you don't want to fucking listen to me because it's bullshit. You see, that's there's nothing wrong with that. Because you're still in character. You're not, it's not fucking you up. Yo, you got to get that book, man. Let me tell you. Let me you tell you. Get that let me, book. Let me Michael, tell you Shirtlifts, my, Michael Shirtlifts audition. I'm let telling me you. tell you my Robert De Niro story, and then this may okay. bleed into your Chaz Palminteri. Okay. Oh, perfect. Go ahead. Because uh, it's the same movie, Bronx Tale. Yes. Here we go. Okay. Uh, so Segway! I, I go. <laughs> hey, what, are you, Steinberg, is this what you're doing? He just sits there? A lot of times, yeah. <laughs> Okay. No, no, no. You don't. They were like this. Oh, you gonna leave the Jewish man out? Oh, so this is what. It no, is. no. Think, no, think, what, think what, of it like this. Uh, uh, <laughs> Magic Kareem Kirk Rambis. Yeah, I, I'm only True. needed at a certain point. Die for the balls but, but no, when you need. But here's okay. the other part. You don't remember this, but when I when I did this with you guys before, yeah, I talked a hundred times more than I talked already on this podcast than I did when you two were, when we were on Sirius did and we did the other thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I want to make sure these trails are kind of low. Pele right here, just to show you. That's Pele number ten. Would you sit your physically fit ass down, dude? Doesn't he make it more insecure just looking at him? Like I, I, this is going to be one of the gayest things I've ever said. Oh, but going into the oh. new year, I would like him just to send me a picture with no shirt on every, Man, that's every day. Pause. Every, every day. No, I'm serious. Pause. I'm serious. Pause. Because I just want to see how fucking Pause. far away Pause. from being in shape that I am. Pause. <laughs> Pause. So, okay. The you got ab muscles? You got you got a six pack? Not really. No, nah, it's kind of, I, I'm a little sloppy on there. I I, I just I'm not bad, but uh, nah, I got I got there's stuff I got to work on, but I'm pretty decent. I'm decent. I don't want to get off what he where you guys are going. Go ahead. We we've made a commitment this year that we are going. You to- You guys can get in shape. You just don't do it. Let's so, not start talking about protein powder. No, okay, no. So, you need yeah. to go to the gym. You need to be on yes. machines. You need to be doing cardio. So here, yeah. uh, at the movie's called Bronx, that shit. The yeah, movie's yeah. called Bronx Tale. Okay. Uh, I go into the audition. Right. Uh, De Niro's there. And he tells me. Damn. De Niro's there. And he tells me. Uh, let me. I had a hat on. He told me to take my hat off. He goes, don't cut your hair. I went, I got this motherfucker. De Niro told me, don't cut my hair. Why would he tell me that? <laughs> <laughs> So, because so, I want, I need to remember that you suck. <laughs> <laughs> Who was so bad? The guy with the hair. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, I don't know. No, no, no. Really bad. Um, a lot of time, black guys they got the fade this type, but I wanted to keep this guy's hair nice and nappy. I fuck You're a lot very, of black women. I yeah, know. Yeah, he goes. I know. It was the guy that I told to keep the hair. I just needed somebody to remember who's So, fine. of course, the, okay. the role that I was auditioning for was the black girl's brother. Remember that? That one, the scene where she calls oh, out. Oh, yeah. You nigga, he's like, what? Fuck him. I yeah, told you. Yeah, so you, were, you auditioned I, for that that's part? That's the role. And I that was, guy got it. And that guy got it. Fuck him. But I'm like, dude, I, and, and, you know, this was back when I was a kid. Wow. Remember how old that movie is? Yeah. So, you know, do the math. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, my father, who's a movie connoisseur, I've seen everything to there. I'm like, that's Robert fucking De Niro. De Niro. And when he said, don't cut my hair, nigga, I was floating home. I like, I'm going to be in a Robert De Niro movie. Never happened. Damn. Never happened. Damn. Now, I'm going to show you my Chaz Palminteri story. This is last year. I have a photo. I think this is last year. 
Chaz Palmate. You know Chaz is about 6'4". Tall. So I'm at the cellar. I think it's, it had to be like two years ago. So I do my shit. Bang, 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 bang. I get out. I'm walking on McDougal Street. And the guy goes, hey, yo, come here. Come here. Hey, kid, come here. I go, hey, oh, shit. He goes, come here. You were fucking amazing. Holy shit. Your voice transitions. You're a fucking genius. God damn it. You were fucking, ah, you de- right. very Bronx tale. Right. Come here. Come here. And he's standing next to another dude. This dude about five, six, five, seven. Suited up. Right. This motherfucker had the double breasted, just clean. Hair was white hair. Perfect. Diamond ring. He goes, you were fucking amazing, dude. You fucking, yo, you had me fucking cracking up. God damn, you're fucking talented. I go, I go, hey. I said, Chaz, what's up? He goes, you're a fucking talented kid, man. You're fucking beautiful. I go, hey, what do you do? He goes, I do things. <laughs> anyway. That's exactly what he said. Dude, let me tell you. I got, goes, now you're bleeding me into another goes, story. Goes, but go ahead. Finish goes, that story. He goes, I do things. He goes, but you're fucking, you're fucking amazing. You're going to, you're fucking something out. Dude, they get, you know, that's Italian look, compliment. Look, let me tell you. He's like, I've seen a lot of fucking, he goes, holy shit, you're fucking this shit. You're fucking, he's holding this shit like this. And they t- he goes like this. Hey, can I take a picture? Fuck yeah, take a picture, huh? Let's take a picture. You're fucking amazing. Keep up the good work. Chaz. Look, let me tell you, Chaz. Let, me tell you, let me tell you something, dude. Chaz, baby. This is what I love about, oh! this is what I love about Italians because okay. we're so much like niggas. Yeah, we're, we're the same. It's the same, yeah. So uh, 106 in Park, remember that show? Yeah, of course. Uh, and this is when, before, uh, I forget, the the, the, the original host, uh, 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 Free, Free and, and the dude, AJ. AJ. So, uh, and and they they shot this in Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, the studio's in Brooklyn. So yeah. they have uh, Italian security guys. So- this is my first time doing a show. I'm, and this yeah. is like mad TV. I'm kind of somebody yeah. now a little Hell bit. Hell yeah. So I go home for the first time after being in LA. I want to treat my mother. I got a little bit of money. I want to treat my uh, mother and my family yeah. to a nice steak dinner. Expensive <laughs> steak New York dinner. <laughs> so I asked one of the guys. I go, hey man, where's a good uh, a steak place here in the city? He goes, hey fucking Paulie. It's a good fucking place for the guy to get a good steak. And Paulie's like, fuck it. I don't know. Fucking take him to Spock's. Now, my dad, again, movie yeah, connoisseur. Right. My dad loved everything mafia. Yes. So I'm like, Sparks, <laughs> Sparks, Sparks. That name is fucking familiar. Yeah. And then it hit me. Yeah. This is the restaurant where the mobster Paul Castellano was gunned mm. down. Oh, right in the front. And drive, and right in the front, the drive by <laughs> shooting. So I go, Sparks, ain't that the spot? <laughs> Where the mobster was killed in a drive-by. I don't want to get caught in no crosshairs. Your dad's like, nah. And, right. And the guy goes, the tag goes, yeah, but they make a great fucking steak. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> like, just that answer was just like so fucking Italian. Like, yeah, but they make a great fucking steak. What are you going to do? It's like these fucking guys. All you got to do is sit in the back. No one will see you. The fucking bully won't even reach you. They hit two Mexicans in the kitchen. Yeah, the way he got it, dude, if you get, if they shoot, the Mexicans will get hit before it hits you. You won't even enjoy the steak. Feeling. Believe me, the blood will mix right into your gravy. You won't even feel a fucking difference. <laughs> yeah, man, that's that's my Chaz Palmer. T- yeah, it's fucking dude. Have you ever seen his uh, podcast? His, his, he has a podcast. Yeah, man. No. Yeah, he's the shit. He's like cerebral, real thinker. Yeah. I, I, I enjoy watching him. I, I have another Italian story. I was doing. You remember Jeff Singer, mm, the comedy sense. dude? Yeah. Well, they fired him uh, when Montreal. He, he's yeah, the mm-hmm. Montreal comedy guy. festival dude. They they fired him. You know how they fired him. It was some sexual allegations, and he was calling black people the N word, which, and he's a Jewish cat. <sighs> I was like, anyway, I, I thought Jeff was a cool dude. He got me on late night with Jimmy Fallon, and then he just did some N word shit, and you know, whatever. Anyway, but he used to do a show with Big Pussy. Mm. You remember Big Pussy from um, Big Pussy was in um, Sopranos. Sopranos, Sopranos yeah. right? So that guy's real cerebral and right. the, the big guy. Big pussy is? Big, yeah, he's really smart. Knows a lot of shit. So he had a show. It was like a mob show on Sirius XM, right? So it's the dudes from the movies that are like his crew. And he was a fan, he's a fan of mine. And he wanted me to come on the show because he had, had he had Patrice O'Neill on there. And then he was they wanted me on there. So Jeff's like, yeah. I have this show that I'm producing with them, Big Pussy and his mob buddies. But you guys got you got to come over there. You know they're big fans of yours. I said okay, so I go in there, 
We're just talking about all kinds of shit. And he's just, he knows all my shit. So you went to university? I said, yeah. And then they start talking about different shit, like comedy and, and you know, and 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 there's the one guy. Remember, hey, the guy that talks like this is that guy. He's like, yo, let me tell you something. He's fucking piece of shit. These motherfuckers. He started having flashbacks of his days in the month. And, and he, they just went off topic. <clears throat> They're all going, yeah, especially that other guy. I want to fucking kill his fucking gut. And Jeff is going, what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> Stay on topic. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> He's back and going, stop talking about that. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, we're sorry. Sorry. We didn't know. <laughs> what were you saying, guys? So they're like all PTSD. Oh my God. It was hilarious. Uh, it was the funniest shit. That, yeah, that's Italian. I did a lot of Italian shit. So listen, man, um, yeah. we want to do uh keep you also uh to have a have you do our podcast oh, episode. Oh, oh, I mean our, our email. email. Should, or should we just do a double episode what? back to back, just Godfrey two hours? What happened? No, yeah. no, no, no. I just cause we we we, we have keep to, how long no, do you no, usually no. go? We, well, an hour. But, oh, but we have that. We, we have an special. email episode. But yeah, we could just do two. It, no What's, email episode happened? this week. Just let's roll this for two hours. One part one, part two. Really? That's you, what I do. Yeah. Well, when why, I have a two hour thing, I so I don't split do it up. don't do email. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a break from email? emails this week. What's we, email? People send us emails, and, and then we, we read. I told you that when I text you, I said people send us emails, and then we read them. Oh, just, or let's just do a half an hour of emails because he's, I don't want to shortchange it. Yeah, but I like I'm not shortchanging Godfrey. We're having a good time. Well, let's do. Just happened here. Yeah, you Jeff, Singer, Jeff Singer should, should, should fucking go One stay on topic. Yeah, stay on topic. Uh, what the, that, 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 you know, how, how, how long? How long we got you for? If, I'm, I'm, just keep going. So then let's just do the two let's here and try to do the. You don't want to do the other the email? Oh oh my I think God. we just do. I think we just do, do. back to back. Uh, no one's gonna care. It's a good We're episode. We're in Baltimore. It's fall. Baltimore. We got God for y'all. We, we, we skip emails uh, for one food week. Sucks. Spears and Steinberg. Thanks for listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast. If you like to know who's responsible for this shit, it was hosted by Ari Spears and Andy Steinberg, produced by Steve Merrick and Anthony Holmes, executive producer. Big Papa, Robert Kelly, and Matt Klein Schmidt for the Laugh Button Podcast. For more information on where to find us on the internet, visit SpearsburgPod.com.